Hi there, welcome to the webinar. My name is Martin Bonesire, founder of The Trusted Home Buyer. I'm a professional real estate buyer, an expert in probate, and a trusted advisor that can help you with your real estate decisions. The reason you're watching this webinar is because you're considering or you've already decided to sell a property that you own or that has just been passed on to you. I've put together a powerful and informative webinar designed to protect you, help you make the best decision possible, put the most cash into your pocket, all with the least amount of aggravation, stress, and hassle. While my specialty is purchasing real estate during probate, this webinar will help anyone interested in selling a property. Whether your property has lots of equity, is upside down, whether you're forced to sell through job relocation or divorce or bankruptcy, or perhaps you have a rental property that you simply don't want to deal with anymore, I'll help you determine the best way for you to get the most for your property. This webinar could prove to be the single most important thing that will get you through all of this with the best possible outcome. Just as a side note, because it's so prevalent today, if your property is upside down, I'm going to show you how you can get some fast cash in your pocket and perhaps even preserve your credit while still being able to walk away from your burden. Great, so let me dive right into what you're going to learn in this very special webinar. In this webinar, I'm going to help you discover the dirty little secrets of today's real estate market and what that means for your property value. I'm going to reveal the six myths out there about probate and selling houses, as well as warn you of the four biggest mistakes house sellers make when they're in your situation and how you can avoid them like the plague. Plus, I'm going to give you critical insider secrets that will ensure your deal goes through the first time. We're going to talk about the sneaky way you can get wrapped up in a contract with an unscrupulous investor and how you can repel this tactic with one simple step. You're also going to hear the stories of people just like you and how they sold their home quickly, safely, and securely without the hassle and the one method they used to close on their house in less than a week with maximum cash in their pocket. By the end of this webinar, you're going to be equipped with all the information that you need in order to successfully make the right decision with complete confidence and 100% certainty. And one of the most important things is that I'll help you relieve the stress and pressure of the situation you're in. We all know stress is the number one source of health problems. It's no fun. It causes disease and it shortens your lifespan. The reality is we can never get back our time. And you probably realize that spending six to 12 months Trying to sell a house often takes away from quality family time, from the business you're running, the career you're building, or from your leisure time. This webinar is all about getting your time back, getting you the most cash possible for your situation, and most importantly, helping you get your life back on track. So, I'm here to help you get through this in the most positive way possible with the least amount of stress to get a quick resolution. The end result will be peace of mind and the freedom to focus on the good things, the memories, your family, and the things that really matter to you. Now, because I value your time, I'm going to be up front and tell you that if you are interested in selling your house right now, then feel free to pick up the phone and call me at the number on the screen. I'm available to give you a free assessment on your property and you may be eligible for a cash transaction immediately. Call me now if that's the best option for you. All right, just wanted to make sure you knew about that. So, let's get started. First, let me introduce myself so you can get comfortable with me. I'm a simple guy with simple needs. In fact, if you meet me, you'll see me approaching this car. I've lived in Arizona for a number of years, but I grew up in Michigan. My parents were immigrants that moved here from the Netherlands with $40 in their pockets, literally. I was one of nine children, so they had a lot of mouths to feed. They opened up a little bakery and were well known in the community. I started working when I was five years old, folding boxes to put the cakes in, but as you can see from this picture, I started applying for a job years before that. My wife absolutely loves that picture and shows how dedicated I was to getting involved in the family business. Since then, I've grown up and gone on to have a family of my own. My wife, Tina, and I have been married for 12 years, and we have four beautiful children. You can see them in the picture here. We have Samuel, who's eight, Caleb is six, Sophia is five, and then there's Chloe, who's two. They are the loves of my life, and everything I do, I do for them. They work with me in some of my real estate transactions. In fact, you can see us all here working on a house project. As long as we're spending time together, we're having fun. A little known fact about me is that I was an Olympic athlete. Here's a picture of me with Bill Clinton after the 2000 Olympic Games held in Sydney. 
For me, the biggest honor was having the privilege to represent the United States. There's a lot of great memories there, and it always reminds me of how blessed I am. It's a constant reminder to me to use my time and health wisely because it slips away so quickly. Even though my athletic life was exciting and I had a great career as an electrical engineer for Motorola, I always felt trapped in a cubicle. I have a passion for helping people and always thought there was something better out there for me. So I started looking for a more fulfilling career. And I got started in real estate when a fellow engineer was in dire straits and needed help. He and his wife had committed to building a house for their growing family, but he couldn't sell his condo. He was in over his head and he needed to sell quickly. I made the decision to help him out and I purchased his property. The feeling I got after I helped them out really resonated with me and I loved the experience so much I decided to do real estate full time and I soon quit my job. Since then I've helped hundreds and hundreds of families with safe and secure transactions while being able to put cash in their pockets and help them move on with their lives. So now that you know who I am a little better, let me show you how I can help you. More than likely, you're going through an emotional upheaval for having lost a loved one. You might be feeling overwhelmed with everything that needs to be done. Some feel guilty for getting money and property unexpectedly. Maybe you grew up in the house and you're on the fence right now wondering whether you should even sell. Or perhaps you just want to be done with the house and you're ready to move on quickly and get on with your life. And maybe you're excited to find out what you can sell the house for and excited about reaping the benefits of a quick sale. All of these are natural feelings to have and understandable. This webinar is going to give you options and solutions specific to what your feelings and desires are right now. Now, financially the house will fall into one of three categories. First, there are no mortgages and the house is free and clear. Second, there are mortgages or debt on the house but the house still has equity in it. And third, the house is upside down which means that there is more owed than the house is worth. There are options for selling your house for each of these situations and if you watch this entire webinar I'm going to be able to give you options no matter what your situation is. Even if your house is upside down you'll learn how you may be able to get some cash instead of just letting it go. Before we get into those topics let's talk about today's real estate market and how that affects you. Now a few years ago house prices were going through the roof. It would have been easy to sell your house for top dollar. However, in 2007, disaster struck. There was a major real estate collapse, and since then, property values have plummeted and have continued to decline by an average of 10 to 25% every year. In fact, according to Zillow.com, the average depreciation for the past five years has been 17.5% per year in the city of Phoenix and as high as 25.4% per year in some other areas of the valley. The reason I bring this up is that I want to caution you that many people think they're going to make much more money on a house than today's market is willing to offer. More on why that's important later. Now let's dive right into the top myths about probate and selling houses. Myth number one, you can't sell the house until probate is complete. That is absolutely not true. The courts have given the personal representative of the estate the authority to sell the property on behalf of the estate. So if the courts have assigned a personal representative, perhaps that's you or a family member, that person has the legal authority to sign the documents to sell the property. This is of course verified by the title company prior to closing. So I just wanted to quickly clear that up for you. Myth number two, you should just let the property go into foreclosure if it's upside down. Not true. Let me tell you about someone who is upside down who I helped come out on top. It involves Jack and Diane who were brother and sister. She lives in New York and he lived in Phoenix. Jack tragically passed at only age 52 from complications of pneumonia. He had a girlfriend that was living with him and everything worked out fine until the girlfriend could no longer afford the mortgage payments and had to move out. So when she moved out there was a nice property that was sitting there vacant. It was nicely landscaped, nice on the inside, but no one to live in it. Her brother had obviously loved the property and put a lot of care into this property. The problem was that he owed more on the house than it was worth, and Diane thought her only option was to allow this beautiful house to go back to the bank through a foreclosure. She didn't want to do that to her brother because she knew he wouldn't have approved, and she didn't want to dishonor his legacy by doing so. And also, it would take months of dealing with the bank, and she just didn't have any emotional energy left. 
She just wanted the estate closed. So she remembered she had gotten a letter from me about 10 months earlier, and so she called. And it's a good thing she did. Instead of walking away with nothing, I was able to give the estate some cash, and her problem was solved in less than two weeks with the estate closed. It was a classic win-win. The estate got some money and a quick solution. The legacy of her brother was preserved along with the house he loved. And instead of being part of the foreclosure problem, she was part of the solution. And now there's a very appreciative family living in this home. So the moral of the story is that if you are underwater, just give me a call. I can help delay an impending foreclosure sale and give you options that will help with your situation. Myth number three, you have to fix up the house to get the most money. And that is absolutely not true. Traditionally, we think that if we invest $10,000 into fix-up, then we'll get $20,000 back in selling the house or more. And this used to be true, and I wish it were true today, but it's simply not the case. In today's market, everyone wants a deal, and they know there are plenty of deals out there. Everyone is telling themselves, I'd like to buy something, but it has to be a great deal or I'm not interested. And that's why nearly all sales are foreclosures and very few are buying fixed up homes. So when your potential buyer walks into a newly fixed up house with new appliances, carpet, countertops, bathrooms, they'll perceive that the price tag for the house will be inflated and they'll quickly move on to the next house so that they don't miss out on the deal that they're looking for. By fixing the house up, you may sell the house faster, but most never get any extra money out of the deal. Plus, it will take way more time to fix up the property. It might take a couple of months or longer to actually get any renovations done. In addition, many find it a hassle to hire contractors, meet up with them to get estimates, negotiate with them, and make sure they don't get ripped off by shady contractors who don't finish the job or do flimsy work. Oftentimes, the hassle is not worth the reward, especially if you live out of town, value your time, and don't have experience in fixing up houses. You can sell your house quickly for cash without fix-up or clean-out. I remember a transaction I did with a woman named Dolores, whose son Douglas had passed away last summer. The house was near South Mountain in Phoenix. She and her husband lived in Tennessee, and when they called me, they knew the house would need work in order to sell it. Due to flood damage, all the flooring was ripped out and the drywall needed to be redone. They didn't want to invest the emotional energy, or the money, into fixing it up, especially since they lived thousands of miles away. They made the decision to sell and immediately called me. They contacted me on a Sunday and needed to close by Friday. They told me the exact number they needed to walk away with and so we did it. I was able to give them exactly what they needed. I paid off their mortgage, closing costs, fees, and they walked away with the check in the exact amount five days later. So this was a great example of closing extremely quickly and the seller getting exactly what they wanted without having to fix up the house. On to the next myth. Myth number four, you have to clean out the house to get the most money. Generally, this is true if you want to sell with a real estate agent, but it is absolutely not necessary to sell to me. While most people want to go through the possessions and take and donate items of value, most people don't really want to deal with the headache or even the emotional impact of cleaning the house out, especially if it's not even necessary. According to many of my clients, this is one of the most valuable hidden benefits of the service I provide. You see, by avoiding the hassle of cleaning out belongings and perhaps junk too, it allows you to avoid added stress and lets you focus on the good memories. An example of this involves an individual named John. John had gone to live with his son in Prescott for the last few months of his life. No matter what, John's son Floyd was really proud of his dad. He told me stories about how his dad was in the Navy and survived the Pearl Harbor attack and went on to travel the world. He was an extremely rare and interesting individual. When his dad passed on, at some point they got around to checking out his dad's previous housing situation. His dad had a double-wide mobile home with a big addition on two lots. His dad had a roommate, but she'd taken off at some point after he left and no one knew where she went. When Floyd and his wife went into the house, they were horrified. It was a total wreck. If you've seen a Hoarders episode on TV, this was that bad. There was junk, books, boxes, and garbage everywhere. The fridge was full of black mold. The grass was overgrown. The storage shed was full of more garbage and junk. The worst part was that there were a number of cats that were locked in the house and no one knew it. They obviously didn't survive the ordeal. Needless to say, 
They didn't want to deal with the cleanup and mess. They knew that if they had attempted to clean out the property, they would have had to pay for labor, dumpsters, and supplies. They would have had to spend countless hours scrubbing and cleaning. Floyd knew his dad was embarrassed of his hoarding problem and would never have wanted him to do that. His dad was an amazing guy, and he wanted to remember him that way. So they simply wanted to take a few meaningful items with them and sell the property quickly so they could move on with their life. Since I'm an expert in restoring houses to their former glory, I knew I could take care of all the clear-out and clean-up for far less money than it would cost them, so I made an as-is offer on the spot. I didn't need a 10-day inspection period that most people will ask for. Also, Floyd and his wife were really concerned because they knew that there were some title issues that they didn't know how to resolve. So my offer even had an agreement to take care of absolutely everything. The clear-out, the clean-up, even the title issues. I made sure they didn't have to worry about a thing. We closed down the house a week later, well in time for the holidays, and they were extremely happy because they got cash money for Christmas and didn't have to deal with the nightmare anymore. So the takeaway here is that you don't have to deal with the hassle of cleaning out the property to get the most value out of it. All right, on to the next myth. Myth number five, selling with the real estate agent is the only or best option. Actually, there are really two options you have when it comes to selling your house. You can, of course, sell your house with a real estate agent, or you can sell it yourself or by owner. The reason people choose to sell with a real estate agent is because they don't want to find a buyer themselves. And that's understandable, as finding buyers can be difficult and a lot of work. The second option, sell by owner, is where you sell the house yourself with a for sale by owner sign in your front yard. The main reason people choose this route is because they don't want to pay a commission to someone else. The beauty of the service I provide is you get the best of both worlds. You don't have to pay a commission and you don't have to find a buyer. I'm interested in buying your house for cash and would like to make you an offer. Just give me a call. You can reach me at the number on your screen. All right, moving on to the next myth. Myth number six, selling your house yourself or with a real estate agent is going to be easy. I know some phenomenal agents and many of my good friends are in real estate. And I will tell you that working with a phenomenal agent can make things much easier. With that being said, a few mistakes can turn the process into a nightmare. In the upcoming minutes, I'm going to share with you the most common mistakes and headaches people encounter when selling their house and how to make sure you don't fall victim to them. Mistake number one, passing the buck to the agent. Most people think it's going to be quick and easy to sell their property with an agent and that you'll just be signing someone else up to do all the work. The reality is that there's still a lot you have to do. First, you will have to clean out the property. The agent won't do that for you. Then you need to invest the time and emotional energy to select the right agent that can sell your house and get you a fair price. Remember, not all real estate agents are created equal. If you want an expert, you're going to have to meet with quite a few agents to find the one that will help you sell your house quickly. One quick note, be careful about hiring a family member as your real estate agent. Although this may seem like a good idea, I've seen it cause a lot of family tension, especially when things don't go as planned. Remember, once you're locked into an agent, you can't switch if they aren't doing the job. Most listing agreements lock you in for at least six months, though 12 months isn't unusual either. Mistake number two, overpricing. The costliest and by far the most common mistake you can make is to overprice your property. When that happens, it's rare that an offer is even made, which is extremely frustrating for sellers. For instance, I have an example of a gal named Marilyn. She gave me a call when the house she was responsible for had been on the market for 300 days. It was listed for 70000 I did an analysis for her and estimated that her property should have been listed for 60000 at that time. It wasn't her fault she had overpriced the property because many times the personal representative of the estate gets pressure from family members and others to push the price up because everyone has an inflated opinion of value. It's amazing that even when the personal representative knows it's too much, they feel obligated to follow along with the wishes of the family. The beneficiaries were finally ready to sell, so she called me and asked me for advice. I met her at the property, even though I already had met my quota for the month and wouldn't be able to be the buyer. I recommended that if she was ever going to sell her house, she would have to keep it consistent with the comparable houses in that area. 
of which the statistical average had fallen to $42,421. She gladly took my advice and dropped the price to $40,000. Within a few weeks, she got a cash offer for $42,000 and closed a few days later. She was very appreciative of my time and expertise and wrote the following success story for the Better Business Bureau. Upon meeting with Martin Bonesire, I was immediately impressed with his professionalism and comfortable, no-pressure attitude. He was precisely on time. Furthermore, I was absolutely amazed at his attention to detail. He had certainly done his homework on the home I wanted to sell, providing me with printed materials and statistics needed to make a wise decision. Furthermore, I so appreciated his candidness and openness about all the details involved. I would recommend Martin in a heartbeat as being trustworthy, honest, and caring, and sensitive to the seller's feeling and situation. Marilyn S. Carefree, Arizona. I have plenty of success stories just like this, and you can see more on my website at thetrustedhomebuyer.com. The reason I wanted to share that with you is because I'm a trusted advisor to many people looking to sell their house. I didn't benefit from Marilyn's house sale, but it made me feel good to be able to help her in her situation. Marilyn represents a common group of people that overprice their house and have a difficult time selling it. And because of the market drop, the beneficiaries lost about 20000 by not pricing it right. The moral of the story is, be careful about what price you list your house for, because it could take you a year or more of endless aggravation if you don't price it right. Another risk of overpricing involves the appraisal process. If you are fortunate and get a high offer, remember that your buyer's lender will only lend based on the appraisal amount. If the appraisal comes in less than the loan amount, your buyer has to pay the difference out of their own pocket, which nearly always kills the deal and you're back to square one. We've all heard the story about people being at the closing table with all the legal documents and they get a phone call in the 12th hour and a deal falls apart. This happens hundreds of times every day in our market. It costs money, it costs time, and it also wears you out. The appraisal issue is just one of many issues that causes deals to collapse. Just imagine what it would be like if you had the burden of trying to sell a property for an entire year. It's extremely frustrating and I'm confident you don't want to deal with that hassle. I'll give you some tips and insider secrets in a couple minutes on how to make sure your deal goes through the first time. Mistake number three. Failure to plan for out-of-pocket costs. Many people don't factor in out-of-pocket costs into selling when they're selling with an agent or when they're selling by owner. These out-of-pocket costs can stack up if you're not careful. Let's say your house is free and clear, so you don't know any type of mortgage on it. There are still property taxes, insurance on the house, utilities such as water, electricity, and gas. Also, sometimes there are association dues or lawn and landscaping costs. It's always best to hire a professional to maintain your lawn and pool to keep the property looking sharp. Remember this, an unkempt lawn or a green pool could turn away lots of buyers and cost you thousands in reduced value. Now, let's say there is a mortgage on the house. If it takes six months before you can sell, that's another five or 10,000 extra, depending on your mortgage, of course. If it takes a year to sell, then you need to double it to 10 or 20,000. That's a huge burden and it definitely gets some people in trouble. So here's my advice for you. Set aside all your holding costs for one year, including mortgage payments. If you're not sure what your true holding costs actually are, just give me a call and we'll prepare and send you a holding cost calculator for your property. Okay, now that I've told you about the mistakes that many people make in selling their house, how do you avoid these and avoid spending six to 12 months trying to sell the property? Well, let me ask you. If you could get a fair price for your property today without any of the stress, hassles, or aggravation, would you consider that possibility? Well, first, let's bring out the big, nasty elephant that's in the room, and that is that you're afraid of being taken advantage of by doing a quick transaction. And that's a very normal emotion to have. We're all afraid of being lied to, cheated on, or to work with someone who can't perform. So. What I want to do now is show you how to pick the right person to do business with and the insider secrets on how to avoid the wrong person to do business with. By learning these tips and insider secrets, I'll save you hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars by helping you avoid the wrong buyer. Tip number one, avoid typical investors and inexperienced buyers. When you're looking for a cash buyer, make absolutely sure that he or she is a professional. 
a word of warning here. There are inexperienced buyers and other typical investors out there who claim that they can pay cash for your house but don't ever intend to buy your house, nor do they have the funds to close the deal. Many times these types of people have just purchased a late night infomercial real estate course or went to a get rich quick real estate seminar and they're eager to put their tactics to use. I'm not saying they're bad people, but you need to be careful because they're often inexperienced and they're not able to deliver as they promise, which could waste months of your time and cost you money. Insider secret number one, avoid contract loopholes. These types of investors will often create massive loopholes for themselves in their contracts. Keep in mind that the longer the contract, the more protection there is for the buyer, not for you, the seller. Some investors will say things to you such as, they can close in three days, but then put loopholes and out clauses in the contracts to give them wiggle room. One trick in particular that investors will use is to make their contracts subject to the approval of a third party, whether it be their partner, lender, or whomever. They'll say things like, their partner didn't like the deal, which may or may not be true, and many times they can sneak out of a contract easily without any reason at all and leave you hanging in the wind. Another trick is to put a very long inspection period of two weeks or more into the contract. This allows the buyer to back out of the contract for any reason during that time frame. Many times, the goal of an inexperienced house buyer is to get a signed contract from you and then to find a real buyer with cash on hand who will buy the contract from them for a few thousand dollars. Another option is that they may try to find someone who will lend them the money. Either way, they don't have the ability to close on the property themselves. The danger is that the contract you sign with them may never close, meaning you'll waste months and months wrapped up in a contract that will never be performed on. An example of this involves Dale, whose friend Bill had passed away at the age of 78. Dale was the personal representative of the estate looking over the property in Glendale. Meanwhile, Nancy was the beneficiary living in Minnesota. They'd gotten a cash offer from another investor but I couldn't compete with that offer because in my opinion it was more than the house was worth. However, it turned out that the investor kept delaying and never ended up buying. The end result is that Dale and Nancy ended up coming back to me a couple of months later to help take the property off their hands. We signed a contract and closed a few days later. Insider secret number two, require an as-is contract. Sometimes it's impossible to tell who has the cash on hand to do the deal unless you know they have the track record for getting deals done. I myself have done countless real estate transactions and have cash on hand to do business with you right now. All my contracts are as is with no inspection periods, which means I don't have any loopholes. The contracts I use for transactions are typically one page contracts, easy to understand and designed to protect you, the seller. Insider secret number three, non-refundable deposit. The real key to determine if your buyer is serious or not is if the earnest money in the contract is non-refundable. All my contracts include a non-refundable deposit that gets deposited with the title company within 24 hours of signing the contract. And that money goes to you if I don't perform on the contract as we agreed. Tip number two, choose a buyer that will pay all costs. Some investors will come in and offer you a purchase price, but then they word the contract so that you're paying all sorts of closing costs and fees. The end result is that you don't walk away with nearly as much as you thought. I cover all your costs, including title insurance, recording fees, escrow fees, HOA fees, fees for city transfer stamps. I'll even pay your property taxes and past due property taxes. Most buyers won't do this, but I do because it's the best way for you to get what you want out of the deal. When you sign a contract with me, I'm committing with non-refundable money that you will walk away with the agreed upon amount. Okay, a quick disclaimer. If you are listing with an agent, the only thing I don't pay is your real estate agent's commission. I have no problem at all working with your agent, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that up front. However, most of the time when people work with me, they're selling without a listing agent, which means that there's more money going into their pocket. Another note, I also provide a cash advance if necessary. After we come to an agreement, I can give you between 10 and 30% of the purchase price as a cash advance to help take care of any financial pressures and burdens. There's no cost for the advance and allows you to close when you're ready. Tip number three, choose a buyer you can trust. This is vital to getting the right deal and ensuring that the sale closes. You need to pick someone who has an honest track record of helping people, who you're comfortable with who's trustworthy and honest. 
I remember there was one time I did a deal with Tom, who was a 34-year veteran of the sheriff's office. His mom, Doris, had passed away, and now he was really close to his mom, and it was a really painful time for him. So when it came time to deal with the real estate, he was very cautious of who he did business with. At first, he was going to list with a real estate agent, but he didn't find anyone he thought would do a good job of selling the house quickly, and he really didn't want all sorts of people traipsing through his mom's house. That's when he called me to see what I could do. I met up with him, and at first he was cautious. In fact, he told me later that he used his available resources to thoroughly check me out. I passed with flying colors. I went above and beyond to help him get the best deal I could work out, and we closed right on schedule giving him enough time to clear out the things he wanted and without his privacy being invaded by prospective buyers. So just know that when you do business with me, it comes with my personal guarantee to treat you with respect and give you the best deal possible. Tip number four, choose a buyer who's sensitive and flexible to your situation. You're going through a tremendous emotional strain right now. You want someone who knows what you're going through and can help you in the best way. I understand the pain that a family goes through in these trying times because of my extensive background with countless families going through the same thing you're going through right now. Not too long ago, I helped Sandra from Buffalo. Her mom had passed away at age 86, and her mom lived in Glendale, so they were separated by 3,000 miles. Now, Sandra was actually pretty cold to me initially. She was very skeptical that I could help her, and whenever I talked to her, she always seemed to be in a distressed mood. Now, I understood that the reason Sandra was like this wasn't because that was the type of person she was. It was because she didn't know what to do and didn't know who to trust. She was exhausted from dealing with everything and felt like everything was out of control. In fact, she had flown back and forth several times from Buffalo and felt like she was burning up all the money in the estate just to handle everything. She didn't want to fly back and forth and deal with it and cost the estate more. But she knew she had to do something to bring everything to closure. Once she got to know me, she warmed up a lot. She told me she was concerned about selling the house because everything was old and hadn't been updated in over 30 years. The shag carpets were worn to the thread and lots of stuff laying around everywhere, and she didn't want to use more money in the estate to fix it up or take any more time thinking about it. In fact, she really wanted to meet in person on her next trip and have the transaction closed by the time she went back. So when she scheduled her trip, I rearranged my schedule and actually changed my family's vacation plans to accommodate her. We met up and I offered her a fair price and paid cash and she had her check in hand when she flew back that weekend. Most importantly, she was able to move on and was finally free of the hassle of constantly traveling back and forth to wrap up all those loose ends. Another great story about being able to help someone in need. Tip number five, choose a buyer willing and capable of solving any problems. The next thing you want to do is find someone that can come in, get creative, and solve any and all associated problems for you so you don't have to worry about them. You would be amazed at how many times I'm asked to step in and complete a transaction that someone else couldn't. An example of this involves Donald who had passed away. He left behind his sister Donna who had also lost her husband earlier that year. So she was definitely having a very tough time. Not only that, but she lived in Columbus, Ohio and the house was in Phoenix. She had agreed to sell the house to a neighbor who wanted to buy it. They had a contract and opened escrow at a title company, but it turned out there was a judgment that she didn't know about. That means that her brother had owed someone some money, and they filed for a judgment so they could get paid. Her brother had never resolved it, and she didn't want to pay for the judgment out of her pocket, and her house buyer didn't know how to handle the situation. So long story short, the buyer never closed the deal, and she told me later that at that point it felt like her life was on hold. She finally called me to see what I could help her with because nobody would help her and she felt stuck. She felt the other contract was a fair price, but I was actually able to pay her an additional 1000 And I made sure to include in the contract that I also had to take care of the judgment at no cost to her. I was able to get the judgment completely removed and she had all her money with the extra 1000 in less than two weeks. This was another case of working closely with the seller to solve the problem so she didn't have to deal with the burden of it. The only thing she regretted was not calling me, a professional home buyer, sooner. One of the beauties of living in this day and age is we can focus on the things we love and enjoy and we can pay people to do the things we don't really like to do. For example, I'm happy to pay a certified mechanic to do oil changes on my car, a professional CPA to prepare my tax return, and an experienced landscaper to cut my lawn. 
Just a few months ago, we decided we needed a minivan for all the kids. The best solution was to trade our old one in. Now, I'm sure I could have saved a few bucks if I tried to sell the vehicle myself through classifieds ads or something, but the hassle wasn't worth it at all. Instead, we went to a dealership, picked out the minivan we liked, and traded the old one in. In less than a couple hours, we drove away with what we wanted. Problem solved. So, I'm sure you also put value on your time, your energy, and emotional involvement that comes with handling all the things that we've talked about. Don't you deserve to be able to focus on the good times and good memories? Instead of focusing on the hassle of fixing the house, cleaning it, clearing it out, listing it, paying out of pocket for months while trying to sell, negotiating deals, all while trying to live your life and take care of your family? There's a great option out there that gives you exactly what you're looking for without the hassle, and that is to work with me, a professional home buyer. This is the best way to get what you're looking for without having to spend another minute worrying about the property and help you move on. I've been helping individuals and estates sell their houses for cash for years, and I'm told over and over again if there's one thing they could do differently, it would be to call me sooner. Ask yourself this. Would your loved one really want to pass on a mountain of headaches and stress just to try and squeeze a few extra bucks out of a deal when in all probability the end result is the same or less anyway? I'm guessing the answer is no. So, what can I do for you? What I suggest is that you call me now to do an assessment on your house. People often spend up to six months, a year, or longer and pay fees and costs that could be avoided if they just had a buyer lined up. I'm a motivated buyer, right here, right now, wanting to do business with you. I'll give you a fair and honest price. I'll help you honor your loved one's memory and put an amazing and grateful family in your house. If you're worried about how time-consuming and stressful it will be to deal with the property and stressed out that it's going to be an overwhelming headache, then give me a call now at the number on your screen. I'm a trusted professional who has a perfect track record with the Better Business Bureau who has cash on hand to buy your house now and put money in your pocket or for the estate. If your house is upside down or in foreclosure, I may be able to give you or the estate some cash. You can involve a real estate agent, but when it's just me, there are no commissions to pay. We can close now or later. We can close in as little as a week or close in a few months to give you time to do what needs to be done. I can take care of and handle liens, judgments, title issues, and other special situations. My contract covers all the closing costs, fees, and taxes for you, so you know exactly what you'll walk away with. I can give you an advance of cash upon contract to allow you to pay obligations. The earnest money is non-refundable, so you have certainty I'm committed. I can clean out any remaining belongings or junk, so you don't have to. If you would like to donate any remaining items, I'll bring them to the charity you specify. I'll fix up the house for you so you can be proud of it. And I'll make sure to put an appreciative family in there that will love it just as much as your family did. Even if you're committed to doing everything yourself, the one promise I make is that you'll be extremely glad that you called me. All you have to do is call me now at the number on your screen. No one can do this quicker, simpler, or more securely than I can. The best part will be that we will close this chapter in your life, you'll walk away with cash in hand, and most importantly, I will take all the hassle and stress out of it, and you'll get peace of mind. You and your family have enough on your plate right now. Don't you deserve to benefit from the services of a trusted and knowledgeable professional home buyer? I'm Martin Bonesire, the trusted home buyer. I'm looking forward to helping you with your real estate needs. You're just a phone call away from solving your dilemma. Call me now. You'll not be disappointed. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Thanks again for listening, and I'll talk with you soon.